What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here solving for some missing sides in some special right triangles. So our special right triangles are the 45-45-90 triangle and 30-60-90 triangle. We've got these over here for our reference. So we'll look over at those as we solve for the missing sides in these two triangles. First one, I have a 45 and a 90. Isn't it a 45-45-90? Well, I can figure out that this one's going to be 45 degrees because one, two, three, all three angles have to add up to 180 degrees in a triangle. So boom, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Well, how do I get to the short side right here? Well, these two are gonna be the same length because they are across from congruent angles. This is also known as an isosceles right triangle. So I know that X is going to equal eight. Now, how about Y? Well, Y is my long side, which is always root two times larger than the short side, which you can see over here if I have the short side, I can multiply by root two to get to my long side. So y is going to be eight root two. Cool? Awesome. Now, don't be confused by the fact that we're using x's over here and there's x's here and there's y's. This is just essentially like a formula over here of how I get to one place to another. And we'll use variables oftentimes in those formulas. Here, I might be asking you to solve for a and b or a and c or x and y or z or whatever. Who knows what kind of variables we might use. Here, we've got x and y. All right. So we've solved the first triangle, now let's solve the second triangle. So I've got seven, which side do I have? Well, it looks like it's across from the 30. I've got a 90, what's left over for this angle? 60 degrees, beautiful, fantastic. So oftentimes we do make you figure out one of those angles and piece things together. Well, since I have the side across from my 30, that's the easiest one to work with. If I look over here to get to my medium sized side, which is this guy here across from the 60, I'd multiply by root three. So I know that X is gonna equal seven times root three or just seven root three. And then to get to my hypotenuse, my longest side, I'd have to double it. So Y is gonna equal two times seven, which is 14. There we go. Easy peasy on these two. All right, now the challenge starts to happen when we are given either this side right here this one's not too bad. This side right here. Anytime you have to deal with the whole radical and dividing by a radical, it can get a little bit dicey. So let's try some of those examples here in just a sec. So now in this one, I'm given the hypotenuse is 12 and I got to find my two legs. Well, the nice thing is, is if I get one leg, I've got the other because these two are congruent. So solving for X gets me Y and vice versa. But how the heck do I get there? Well, if I have this one and I want to get back to my short leg, I have to divide by root two. So I'm gonna take 12 divided by the square root of two, that's gonna give me X or Y or both, right? I can't leave my answer like that, okay? I think it's fine. I personally think it's fine, but the math people of the world have stated we have to rationalize this right here. And uh, here's how you do it, all right? So you gotta multiply by root two over root two. So we're not allowed to have a square root in our denominator because some old person said it a million years ago, and now we just continue on simplifying and rationalizing all that good stuff. So my numerator is 12 root two. My denominator is root two times root two, which is the square root of four or two. So get two right here equals, well, 12 and two, I can divide that. I'll get six square root two. So that's X as well as Y. Both of them are six root two. We circle it. Dope. Beautiful. All right. In this situation, the rationalizing did make it look nice. There's no more fraction. It's just six root two. And you may notice over time of doing these that if I get 12 divided by root two, it is going to be six root two. 20 divided by root two is going to be 10 root two. So it's going to be half with the root two at the end. So you might notice some of those patterns. I'd still show your work, show the rationalization if your teacher requires that. All right? Dope. How about this one down here? Right now, I've got my hypotenuse once again, but it's kind of nice in the 30, 60, 90 trial to have the hypotenuse because... I just need to divide by two to get to my short side, okay? We always go to the short side first. The short side is the one that's across from the 30. So we'll take Y equals 18 divided by two. That gives me nine. So Y equals nine, boom. Final answer on that. And then how do I get my X? Well, the X is across from the 60. And now that I have my short side, I can multiply by root three to get to that. So X is gonna equal nine times, well, just nine root three. There we go. That's it. Nice. Fantastic. Now, there is another challenging scenario when you're given that side right there, because then I have to get back to the short to get to the long. Let's do an example on that, okay? Let me just clean this up. We'll do one more, and we'll call it a day on this video. 
All right, last example here, guys. Once again, I do have the hypotenuse of my 45, 45, 90 triangle, so I have to divide by root two to get back to the short side. This one's a little different, though, because it's an odd number, so let's check out how this is all gonna simplify out. So for x here and y, I'm gonna do 15 divided by the square root of two, and I have to rationalize that because we're not allowed to have square roots in the denominator because someone said so. You know, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll change the world and we won't have to rationalize our denominators anymore because I find it quite, quite irrational. Anyways, got to follow it right now because that is standard math protocol to rationalize your denominator. No square roots in the denominator. Uh-uh. So I have 15 root 2 in my numerator. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is 2 in my denominator. And now 15 divided by 2, that's 7.5. It doesn't go out nicely, so we'll just say x equals this, as well as y also equals 15 root 2 over 2. You can also do 15 over 2 and then root 2 at the end. Either way is cool. Those are my two final answers for that particular triangle right there. Cool? Awesome. All right, last one. I've got my root three side that's across from the 60, right? So that's the medium size side, as I like to call it. And if you look over at a little cheat right here, or a little formula sheet, I'm going to be dividing by root three to get back to my short side. Any of these problems, I always get my short side first if I'm not already given the short side, right? If I'm given one of these two, easy peasy, same thing here as this guy, multiply by root two to get here. But if I got my long side, I got to divide by root two and get to my short side. For 30, 60, 90, there are two scenarios of having the long or the medium side side where I got to get back to the short to get to the other one. Everything runs through the short side. So 21, I have to divide that by root 3 to get back to y. So I have y equals 21 over root 3. And again, we're not allowed to leave it as 21 divided by root 3. No radicals in our denominator, so we have to rationalize it, which gives me 21 root 3 over what's root 3 times root 3? It's root nine, which is three. Now, can I simplify this? Yes, I can. It gives me y equals 21 divided by three is seven root three. It does look nicer. It does look nicer when it simplifies, but it doesn't always simplify, so it doesn't always look pretty. Um, again, I'm not sold on rationalization, but we gotta do it, all right? Last thing here, I gotta get x. Well, x is my short side times two. So let's write that out. X equals two times the short side, seven root three. So X equals, what is that? Four times two is 14, square root three. Boom, I have solved for X and Y or solved the special right triangle, whatever it means, whatever they ask you there. Find the missing sides. Make sure you jot this down somewhere. This is super duper important. This is how I like to look at it. I've seen other teachers, myself included, do proportions and other things like that. But I found that the triangles, with these little arrows showing how to get one to the other, works out best. I like to have some colors too, makes it pop, separates things. I did everything in red was the multiplication version. Everything in that neon yellow is the division portion. And then, uh, yeah, once you work with that, a lot of practice, rationalization, you'd be all set. So thanks for watching you guys. If you need some more examples, keep watching through the playlist. Otherwise, like it, subscribe it, share it, and have a great day.